my spectacles. Zelda's and my brothers and sisters. I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Almighty God, be upon all of you. In the Quran, Allah says, Say, He is Allah, the one and only. Keep in mind, we must abide the Quran. We have to abide in Islam. We should stand for the truth. We should convey the message of Islam. This is the deen from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The last and final instructional manual for us human beings. It is the glorious Quran. It is the glorious Quran. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had said, it is mentioned in Sayyid al-Bukhari, volume number 2, Book of Zakah, Hadith number 1469. Whoever pretends to be patient, you suffer Allah. Allah will give him patience. So it is something that we all can achieve, and that is logical. Because why would Allah then put patience as one of the keys for success if we are unable to learn it. It's only those who are born with it. Meaning Allah is destined for you patience and then he gives you success in life because your patience no, that would be unfair if we couldn't learn it. So obviously it is something which we can learn and it is required of us. Hence it is very important for us to understand under what circumstances is patience required of us. There are basically three areas. One, in worshiping Allah and following His commandments. Two, in abstaining from wrong actions. Three, in accepting the decree and ruling of Allah, Allah's Qadr. So let us look at the first category of patience, that is patience in doing good, in worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is natural for us to have a virgin in carrying out certain acts of worship like getting up for fajr in the morning. Anas tells us that our body needs more sleep. Anas tells us that we are still tired. The pillow feels the softest at the time we need to get up in the morning. So naturally it's difficult. We have to struggle. So that's why the Prophet Muhammad had said that among the signs of hypocrites is their inability to pray fajr. Also having patience in being consistent and regular in worship is of prime importance. Those people who worship Allah only in Ramadan, the Ramadan Muslims throughout the year, they do not worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when Ramadan comes, you see them in the masjid, praying tarawi, fasting, etc., etc. These are the people who do not show patience in worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regularly. We have to be patient. We are patient meaning holding, restraining our desires and fulfilling the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the first. Secondly, we have to be patient. In abstaining from wrong actions, we have to have within ourselves a fear of punishment. And this is something which we can learn that most of us have lost. As a child growing up, we have a sense of fear of punishment from our parents. In school, fear of punishment from our teachers. But when we become mature and nobody is over us, then the fear of punishment is gone. If we really fear Allah, our lives will be straight. We will be following the straight path. It is because of lack of fear and weakness of our fear that we disobey Allah and engage wrong actions. So this is the second. The last category is accepting Allah's decree and ruling. Patience in times of trial and adversity. It is necessary for us to do so. Allah has promised a great reward for those who turn to Him in times of adversity. As Allah mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter number 2, verses number 155 to 157. Allah said, he would try us and test us with fear, hunger, loss of life, wealth, and fruits of our labors. But give glad tidings to those who are patient. Those who, when a calamity strikes them, say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi 
We belong to Allah and to Him is our return. Those are the ones upon whom are blessings from their Lord and mercy. And it is for those who are rightly guided. So there is a great reward and that should encourage us to be patient. With this, I would like to conclude my talk with the verse from the glorious Quran from Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 153. Ya ayyuhal lazeena O you who believe, seek help with patience, perseverance and prayer. Allah is with those who patiently persevere. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. MashaAllah, an excellent performance. May Allah grace us with the beautiful quality of patience. A few men continue to aspire millions of lives. Men who single-handedly battled the clutches of their evils of their time. Men who sought to bring humanity from the depths of darkness into light. A true gift to humankind without whom we would be gropingly astray. Let's hear from Sister Maryam Chunawala, a seven year old student of grade two, the names of the Prophet Salam, along with their biblical names. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The names of the Prophets mentioned in the Quran are as follows Adam alayhi salam. Prophet Adam, Idris alayhi salam, Prophet Enoch, Noah alayhi salam, Prophet Noah, Hud alayhi salam, Saleh alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Prophet Abraham, Lut alayhi salam, Prophet Lot, Ismail alayhi salam, Prophet Ismail. Ishaq alayhi salam, Prophet Isaac. Yaqub alayhi salam, Prophet Jacob. Yusuf alayhi salam, Prophet Joseph. Shaheb alayhi salam, Prophet Jethro. Ayyub alayhi salam, Prophet Job. Musa alayhi salam, Prophet Moses. Harun alayhi salam, Prophet Aaron. Dulkif alayhi salam, Prophet Ezekiel, Daud alayhi salam, Prophet David, Suleiman alayhi salam, Prophet Solomon, Ilyas alayhi salam, Prophet Elias Elijah, Yunus alayhi salam, Prophet Jonah, Zakaria alayhi salam, Prophet Zechariah, Yahya alayhi salam, Prophet John the Baptist, Isa alayhi salam, Prophet Jesus, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon them all. Subhanallah, our love for the Prophet alayhi salam is ceaseless. Jazakallah, sister. War. 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 Corruption. 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 Famine. Famine. Natural disaster. Natural disaster. The world is in a turmoil. And that's a sad reality. So, how can we make this world a better place? I believe we can by making families stronger, beginning with our own. To find out more, 
on how we can build a better and stronger bond within our families, tune into my series, Save the Families, right here on Peace TV. Implement Islamic values in your families to save them from all kinds of existing evils in Strengthening Your Families. Every Thursday at 7 p.m. and repeat telecast at 12 p.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. Say he is Allah one and only. Allah the absolute and eternal. He begets not, nor is he begotten. There is nothing like him. Focus on the source of wisdom. The Quran is a magnet. And the Sunnah is a revelation. Islam had the solution right from the beginning. We apply that and the problem is solved. Focus on the solution for our world. There is no man on the face of earth. His life was narrated to us like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Poor, rich, white, black, Arab, non-Arab. Everybody say the same word. Obey Allah, obey the messenger. Focus on the akhirah. Tawbah is mandatory upon each and every Muslim. Success for the Muslim is having the correct belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has power of all things, has power of all things. Focus on the facts and realities that motivate the world towards Islam in Islam in Focus every Monday to Saturday at 5 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. Our next orator, Hiba Sayyid, is a compassionate, outgoing seven-year-old with a zest at its pinnacle. She revels in exploring the magnificence of Allah's creation with a passion of narrations of the prophets. Hiba's achievements comprise the certificate of excellence in Hadith studies, English public speaking, recitation of the Quran, and also for her strong Islamic intonation. Alhamdulillah, aiming to proclaim the message, Hiba wishes to be a teacher of Islam, insha'Allah. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Ali Imran, chapter number 3, Verse number 135. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهِ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ وَمَنْ يَغْفِرُوا الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ And those who have been done something to be ashamed of or wrong their own souls earnestly bring Allah to mind and ask for forgiveness for their sins. And who can forgive sins except Allah? Indeed, repentance is the hotline to forgiveness no matter how grave the sin. For the gravity of sincere repentance far outweighs it. So let us hear from Hiba Sayyid, the power of repentance. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sabi ajma'in amma ba'd. A'udhu billahi min shaytani rajim, bismillahi rahmani rahim. يا أيها الذين آمنوا توبوا إلى الله طوبة نسوها رب اشلح لي صدري ويسلي أمري وعل عضة باللسان يفقه قولي My respected elders and my dear brothers and sisters I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته May peace, mercy and blessing the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you. The topic of my talk is the power of repentance. In the verse that I started my talk with from Surya Tahreen, chapter number 66, verse number 8, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give us a choice whether we should repent or not. Rather, He says to believers, Ya ayyallazina amanu, O you believe, tubu ilallahi tawwaz and aswa. Repent to the Lord, a sincere repentance. With this one verse of the Quran, perhaps we can understand the importance of the subject that I am going to address today. Bi'iznillah. However, 
brothers and sisters, since we know the rulings of repentance itself, we would like to look out for it from a different angle and see that one rule that many of us overlook. First and foremost, we all have to be aware that my sin will affect you and my sin will affect every single individual in this gathering and all of this ummah and your sin will affect me as well. So subhanallah, don't say it is my sin, it is my masya, it is me, it is I. No, what I do, it will affect you and what you do, it will affect us. So we all have to fear Allah concerning this ummah because it is you and I for the basis of this ummah. Say khwati fillah, don't take it light and keep in mind whatever you do is for us or against us. My dear brothers and sisters, you need to know what are the benefits of repenting and coming back to Allah? What are they? Why do we have to repent? If we repent, Allah will love you. If you repent, Allah will love you because Allah said in the Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 222. Inna Allah al For Allah loves those who turn to Him constantly. But then you may say to yourself, I sometimes commit a sin, and then I repent. Then I go back to the same sin, and I feel shy, because shaitan is telling me, are you playing with Allah? You are not sincere. And now, Allah will never accept it from you. This is a hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa which is mentioned in Jalan Ibn Hibban. A man came to him and he said, O Messenger of Allah, I commit sins. Qala Tub, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Repent. He then said, But I keep coming back to the same sin. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Keep coming back to the Tawbah. He said, Ila mata, until when? For how long? He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, until the shaitan is defeated. See, from the perfection of mankind, that is imperfect, that we are imperfect, and Allah knows that we are imperfect, and we will commit many sins. Therefore, his gate of repentance is always open. So, as soon as you repent, Allah will love you. Allah will love you because Allah said in the Quran, in Surah al nu chapter number 71, verse number 10 to 13, Qala, فَكُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّوْ كَانَ غَفَّارًا Ask forgiveness from your Lord, for He is the of forgiving. يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِذْرَارٍ He will send rain to you in abundance. وَيُمْدِدْكُمْ بِأَمْوَالِ وَبَنِينَ وَيَجَعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتِهُ Give you increase in wealth and sons, and bestow on your gardens, and bestow on your rivers of flowing water. You repent to Allah, and Allah will give you the blessings of this earth, the niyama of this earth, children, wealth, status. All you need to do is istighfar. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Keep your tongue busy with the remembrance of Allah, with the zikr of Allah, with the istighfar. Also, Iqwati Fillah, you need to know, we all need to know, Ya Iqwati Fillah, every time you are about to commit a matzya, remember your status in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your place on the day of Yawm al-Qiyamah. I will leave you with this before you commit that matzya. Remember the day of Yawm al-Qiyamah. Remember grave. Remember death. And remember, you will be standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, face to face, one to one, no tarjuma, no translator, and no one is going to translate it for you. If you remember this, maybe he will assist you from leaving that masya. With this, I would let you end my talk with the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is mentioned in Tanan ibn Majah, volume number 5, the book of Asatism, hadith number 4251. Wherein he said, Every son of Adam commits Every son of Adam commits sins. And the best of those who commit sin are those who repent. 
فاخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته سبحان الله We pray that Allah Azzawajal accepts our repentance and pardons us from any wrong. A warm-hearted and honest girl of eight, Fatima Kodia enjoys impersonating prominent orators on Islam and learning from their speeches. She has delivered public talks at the young age of four. Alhamdulillah, her hobbies include reading, painting, watching Islamic programs and skating. And what she does the best, presenting lectures on Islam. Fatima's ambition is to teach Islam, thus being instrumental in spreading the word of Allah. The first thing that Satan will try to do is get you to stop praying. You know why? Because he has to kill, destroy your God, and if he wants to penetrate the castle. Once this is done, the God is weakened. And then the shaitan can open the floodgates of evil and storm into the fortress. We need to beware of the clutches of the evil one. I now invite Sister Fatima Kodia to present her talk, Traps of Satan. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa ashabihi, ajma'in, amma ba'd. فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الشيطان لكم عدو فاتخذوا عدوا رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي عمري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي My respected elders and my dear brothers and sisters I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته May peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon all of you. The topic of my talk is Traps of Satan. In one of the greatest verses of the Quran, in Surah Fatih, chapter 35, verse 6, the verse that I recite in the beginning of my talk, Allah informs us, Inna shaytana lakum aduhu, fattakhizu aduwa. Surely Satan is an enemy to you, so take him and treat him as an enemy. Very short, yet full of meanings. Allah Azawajal tells us that he's our enemy number one. The Shaitan is the devil. You can call him by any name you wish. He's our enemy. Allah is telling us that he's our enemy number one. The second command from Allah is we must take him as our enemy. Now, in order for us, to take him as an enemy, to treat him as an enemy. Rule number one, you must know your enemy. Otherwise, there's so many people around us. And if you cannot identify your enemy, if you cannot describe him, if you do not know his characteristics, we fail to identify him. So, you must know the characteristics and the description of our enemy. And not only that, we also have to implement this because by implementing we are actually taking a shield from this shaitan. First, a lot of Muslims got confused. We have jinns, we have shaitan, we have iblis, we have shaitan. So what is this actually? Well, it is very simple. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us and mentioned in Surah Rahman, chapter number 55, verse number 15, wherein Allah informs us, وَخَلَقَ الْجَانَّ مِنْ مَارِجٍ مِنْ نَارِ He created the jinns from fire, free of smoke. So we believe that we have human beings as a species. There's another species called the jinns. And he believes he is the father of all shayateen. He was raised up in status to be with the other angels. And he was the one who disobeyed the last command and refused to prostrate to Adam while all the other angels did so in their obedience to Allah Azawajal. Now, the jinn themselves are like us humans in regards to belief. They are believers and they are disbelievers. However, the disbelievers are not identified by the name jinn. They are called shatil. The Arabic shatil is the plural of shaitan. 
That means that the one who tries the best to make you come out of the loop of Islam, as Allah mentioned in Surah Fatir, chapter 35, verse 6. Inna ma yadru hisbahu liyakunu min ashabi sahir. He only invites his adherents that they may become his companions of the blazing fire. Now we know about Shaitan and his unlimited plans. Let us understand few traps which he lays for us in our life so that we fall prey to him and ultimately become one of his adherents which Allah has warned us. Trap number one. The Shaitan eats and drinks with us. How is that? It is mentioned in Sahih Muslim, Volume 5, The Book of Drinks, Hadith number 5262-5267. That if you begin to eat and you do not say Bismillah in the name of Allah, then he will eat with you. And if you drink, but you do not say Bismillah, then he will drink with you. But if you say Bismillah, but you use your left hand in eating and drinking, then he will share the food with you. 